So in this video, I'm kind of going to go over uh, an SSH error that you might run into from time to time. But if you're new to Linux, um, it's it can be you know daunting. Like, what what does this mean? How do I fix it? Why is it this way? Right? Uh, and um, it's it basically when you try to connect to to an instance, you might get this warning: unprotected private key file. Um, it is required that the private key files are not accessible by others. It will be ignored. Uh, bad permissions, right? So basically, the system you're trying to connect to, it requires that your private key have a certain amount of, of permissions. It needs it to be locked down well enough before it allows access. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, let's see here, what do I got here? So I've got... Uh, you know, in Ava Sandbox from Linux Academy, I'm gonna launch a server real quick. Uh, let's do, we'll do rel8. Uh, let me get a T2 medium. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll give it a public IP. Well, yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll do that. Uh, 10 gigs is fine. No, no. Uh, I'll already use, I'll use the existing one from the first time. Um, oh, I'll go ahead and launch that, and I'm going to use a new key pair, right? And we'll call it the key, the key, the, the cloud. Okay, um, I'm going to download that key pair, okay, and we'll launch instances. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at that instance. It's got a public IP. Okay, and this will change if I if I ever reboot it. It's it's by no means static. Um, I haven't set it static. So let's see here. If I go back to if I go back here, right? Oh, let me get out of this server. I'm on my PC at my house, right? I'm in the users directory. I'm in the the user Josh, right? So I've downloaded that key. And it's it's sitting in my uh, it's sitting in my downloads here. I got the key.pem. And I know this is in uh, you know B downloads S slash. So if I try to SSH, uh, you know, I'll provide the full path. Uh, e downloads the key.pem. And then obviously I would provide the user at, and then you know the IP address of the machine I'm trying to connect to. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. I'm blanking here. Okay, yeah, I don't want IP address. All right, so I've got everything I need to SSH. I've got my SSH command. I'm inputting you know the private key. Um, public keys and authorized keys on the machine, easy to use as the user, and the IP address. And the machine might still be initializing. Okay, yeah, the machine is still initializing. Um, as we can see here. So that should be done any minute now. All right, so now the machine machine is booted up. I try an SSH in because um, I've never been in this machine before. Um, it's going to put a fingerprint in the known host file. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes. And this is the error I get. Warning, unprotected private key file. What does that mean? It means the permissions are too open. So depending on which operating system you're on, there's two ways to fix. There's there's different ways to fix this, right? So obviously, um, the easiest way is on Linux, if, right? Like so, if I'm on a Linux machine, I if I go over to AWS and I hit connect, right, it tells me your key must not be publicly viewable for SSH to work. Use this command if needed, right? So I can use the the change permissions command to modify the permissions on this this the key.pem on a Linux machine, which is pretty easy. 
but for Windows, it's it's a little different. So for Windows, um, oops, where am I? You know, I've got the key pam that pam right here. You know, let me just go back. Uh, see, so I've got my downloads. Oh, where? There we go. So here's my key, right? So I want to go to properties, and I want to go to security, and I'm gonna I'm doing the same thing you would do on Linux, but it's different on Windows. Um, and what I have to do is I'm going to go to advanced here and I don't want all users to, to, to be able to use it, right? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove them. Oh, and it's going to yell, I have to disable inheritance first, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and disable inheritance. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and add a principal and I'm going to add Josh. I'm going to give myself full control. And I'm going to hit apply. All right. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to hit OK. And then it should allow me in. And now I'm in. So it's it's different based on operating system. Um, and it, it can be a, a little bit of a hassle when you, when, you first, when you first start trying to, you know, SSH into your instances and you're hitting errors like this. Um, and now let's say, let's say I've got a key, right, on a, on a Linux machine, right? Well, I'm going to want to use the chmod command, um, which is going to be chmod 400, and then the name of your key, right? So if I, let's see, what, I, I'll just touch a file here. I'll make a key up here. So if I do an ls-l, I can see here, my permissions, and we'll, I'll go over permissions in another video. But basically, read, write, read, write, and write, or and read for uh, user group others. But if I do a chmod 400 on that key.pem I just created, and then I do an ls-l again, now you can see the permissions have changed to read only for, for the user. So basically, basically, you the system that I try to connect to is giving me this error because I have not locked down the permissions on that key well enough. And we've just gone over how to lock down those permissions on a Windows machine and how to lock down those permissions for the key on a Linux machine. And that's it for now. I'll have another error soon.